Good day, fellow investors. So I'm looking at each stock in the S&P 500. I already did the first 50 to 100. I have recently done 12 days ago, the 50 to 75. We'll put it in the description below. Check that out. And today we will do the last 25 of the first 100 S&P 500 companies. Of course, the most interesting ones. If you want to read it, and go more into the details or check in one file all the documents it is for free on my research platform if you want to look what i do feel free to do so but if you just scroll to the curriculum this is what i do the covered stocks and here for reference one of the researches that i'm doing now is the sap 500 and you have it here under free preview so if you click you have here the document 50 to 100 and you just scroll down the following document is uh, 1 to 40 or 1 to 50 1 to 40 this is then 40 to 50 and you have my take on most of the companies there except banks and pharmaceuticals as you there also check what i do just relevance what we did in the past and join the research platform i think you can check it out because it is, I think, big value. Okay, so let's start with the companies. Applied materials oh, depends on the semis cycle. Deer, so Deer is a company that recently did great as food prices went up, investments, machinery, whatever. But keep in mind that is a cyclical and cyclicals are better bought when things look bad not when things look great so yes the p ratio is low but why isn't the dividend seven percent because there is always something in these cycles when those turn you can expect things to return to here so 50 percent down is more likely than 50 percent up so i'm not really a fan of this and you can see here also the bad cycle how long it can last when it comes so this is from 2013 to 2018 which is a big deal and also that makes it a risky situation for me striker the chart shows it must be a great business but I'm not a specialist on medical business and then also 40 time earnings. You know me, not really for me. Now, BlackRock is a very interesting company because it gives us a sensation of where the market is, how the market is breathing. And we now have a P ratio of 20, which is in line with the market. They have 9 trillion of assets under management. So, okay, they're income will depend their profits on the assets if the market goes down 30 percent they will have less under management that's also less profits the dividend is there but what gives us a good insight there is the market dynamics and that's why it's always so important also to just look at blackrock i will check their capital market day that is now in june and then we can discuss what they say about the market so the market flows for now remain positive thus we haven't seen nothing bad related to blackrock yet they are making their money the stock is a little bit down but things have slowed down compared to the financial craziness of 2021 and early 2022 they make their fees okay great business model but P ratio of 20 and with the risk that it follows down the market. Okay, they are not a bank like Charles Schwab that will touch in a moment, but very interesting. And let's put this forward for the capital markets day, but I don't think the growth will be stellar ahead. So at a P ratio of 20, it's just a fairly priced business. Software, cloud, I'm not a specialist analog devices and other semis tjx company likely a good company nothing special price earnings ratio of 24 priced in with the market american tower corporation this is an interest rate game so in july 2021 the fed started pushing rates higher american tower corporation went down 
people were happy with 1% dividend yield or 2%, now they need 3.41. So this depends on interest rates. If interest rates go lower, this will go higher. And uh, stable cash flows, so it is a cash flow company here. Maybe they will be able to grow more, but I think the big growth there has been achieved. Insurance, biopharma, not for me. American Express is on the cheaper side of the S&P 500, P ratio 15, but net income has been slowing down and the market fears a recession there that we have seen in the past hits it severely. So especially at these highs, again, not an attractive risk and reward. Citigroup, I don't do banks. In the last six months, we see that that is a smart thing to do. So I didn't lose any money on the bank sector in the last six months. Automatic data processing, likely a great business, P ratio of 27, good dividend yield, steady growth, high gross margins, 46%, uh, nothing wrong, big net income margins. Now, this is all already something, okay, fairly priced company for the quality. So as I'm going towards the lower numbers of the S&P 500, we see these very interesting things. It's very interesting how the market loves and hates these companies. CVS Health, uh, Walgreens Boot Alliance. So sometimes loved, hated, loved, hated, but again, priced in line with the market for a very competitive business plus a regulated business. So not something that I am attracted to. Vaccines for animals, very interesting business, a spin-off from Pfizer, I think, doing great, even bigger market cap than Pfizer, P ratio high, and uh, as I said, I don't do pharma, even not for animals. Now, this is where we looked deeper. We discussed Vodafone yesterday, T-Mobile now, T-Mobile US, completely different telco, P ratio 40. Of course, there is some adjustments as they acquired Sprint. So there are some charges, restructuring, no synergies yet. So the P ratio is likely when things normalize around 20, which is in line with the market. And everyone likes T-Mobile as the telco there, but they didn't like it here. Now they like it, which means there is also hope maybe for other telcos. But the mother company has a P ratio of five. So I looked a little bit at Deutsche Telekom, P ratio of five, dividend yield 3%. The market cap there is 105 billion euros and they own 50% of T-Mobile US. So if I calculate things, just quickly, that is 70 billion. So you get Europe and everything for 30 billion here, something like that. You can read more. Here it is written. So 30 billion given the market capitalization. So pause the video and you can simply read it. Now, look at the numbers, of course, the merger with Sprint inflation a little bit growing well, very profitable not yet shown because of these merger and restructuring charges that are here, 4 billion, 5 billion, which is significant. But adjusting that P ratio of 20 in line with the market, which is, again, fairly priced, nothing bad, nothing wrong, but nothing stellar. Then I looked at Deutsche because you can buy T-Mobile US by buying Deutsche and also get a dividend. And also when T-Mobile improves, if it goes higher, you will also get the benefit through T-Mobile as a big part of their profits comes from T-Mobile US, but you also get these profits, let's say, at a fair price when you compare the market caps. Now, free cash flows is there. Free cash flows without T-Mobile US is 3.5 billion per year, 10% yield, as I said, without the company. And also the telcos there, unlike Vodafone, are growing a little bit, taking Vodafone's market share. So looks good, leading in mobile, lagging in broadband a little bit. This is something that I did for my research platform, a calculation on what they buy and what would be, let's say, a normal value of these telcos individually, nine times 
EBITDA after leases. So if you make two billion, you could be sold to the Dubai fund or something like that for 14 billion. And the outlook, slight increase, stable company, again, 3% dividend plus T-Mobile. For me, T-Mobile is a little bit on the expensive side, so I'm not that interested also in Deutsche Telekom. Chubb is insurance. I remember looking at Altria, you can click on the video here in 2018, 19, and I said, okay, no growth there, just dividend, not interested. And I was smart in doing that. Of course, you get the dividend, but there is something that is actually going to make it ugly, and that is the debt levels. If you are a declining business, your debt levels should go down, not go up, which means that they are issuing debt which they think of repaying in future, but they are paying dividends. And that's a situation that will actually end up very, very ugly because they are playing with financial engineering. They are playing with fire in a structurally negative trend, making acquisitions, trying to do things like that. So be very, very careful. I didn't like it here. Now I like it even less. So be very, very careful. Southern Company, utility, 4% yield, great compounder over time. If you add the dividends, you would have made yourself a nice retirement income there. But again, okay, this is already fairly priced, 4% dividend yield, nothing wrong, but they have 50 billion of debt, investing heavily for growth, that can backfire, but as long as it works, it works. Charles Schwab is another business that is playing with fire. Recently, the stock dropped on the banking crisis and they just borrowed 2.5 billion. If a business needs to borrow money just to survive for corporate purposes, it means that they are in trouble. And then, yes, they are a broker, but also a bank. And then you see how these things backfire. All the financial engineering can backfire in a second. They have also something that I checked on their balance sheet, 20 billion of unrealized losses. So they are not just a broker. And that's something to understand. They are also a bank playing with your money, taking sides with their money, which leads to Lehman Brothers risks, etc. So yes, cheap could be whatever brokerage growing could be bankrupt next year. Not for me. Progressive insurance, and this is also a very interesting story. Progressive. Every Berkshire conference call, every year they ask Warren or Ajit, what about progressive? Why isn't Geico doing the same things as progressive, progressive? And Warren and Ajit always give a number, yeah, we are working, checking, but it's not that easy. Like there is something that progressive is doing that they know they are doing, but Berkshire doesn't want to do it. And then when you think about, when you connect the dots, Charlie Munger says that every insurer usually goes bankrupt every 30 years, except Berkshire. Hmm. And then you think, why aren't they following their progressive company that's doing greatly, P ratio 100, no dividend yield growing? Maybe they are playing with fire, maybe not. But I don't know the answer because I don't do insurance, but that's just a feeling I have, I get from that, watching this, analyzing Progressive, and if you are invested in Progressive, please find the answer to that question. Why Warren and Ajit aren't doing those things that Progressive is? I would like to see your comments and discussion. Maybe I'll learn something, but as I said, I don't do insurances. Again, another insurer, Boston Scientific, likely a good company. Everybody likes it. P ratio of 87, price to sales of 7. No value investing there. And that's it for today. Check my research platform for my picks. I'll see you in the next video.